Man, I got nothing quippy to say in the beginning. Let's just talk about the heavy movie of the week or year. So Sound of Freedom is a movie, little setup here. I'd never even heard about this movie until a couple days ago. I saw it in the comment section. People were like, why don't you review Sound of Freedom? I was like, what's that? I, what is that? Turns out it's not what it sounds like. It, I mean, Sound of Freedom sounds like a 2002 war in Iraq military puff piece film. Right, it's not. Sound of Freedom is based on a true story. It stars Jim Caviezel as Tim Ballard, who's an agent for Homeland Security. And this movie is the true story about how this guy, Tim Ballard, worked with colleagues, got some funding, set up a sting operation to catch a bunch of these traffickers and free a bunch of children from trafficking. Now the first 45 minutes or so of this movie is exposing you to the horrific nature of the subject matter. And it needs to do that, I totally get that. That is to say, this film is very heavy. This is not like Taken. Taken is using a real thing, human trafficking, and that's the springboard to show Liam Neeson be a badass and smoke baddies, and that's why we love him for it, and that's why the movie's entertaining. This is not that. This is a very real look at the world of child trafficking. Not to say it's graphic, it's a PG-13 movie. I appreciate that about it. We know what happens to these children when they're trafficked. We don't need to see it. I like the fact that the film knows that you don't have to show it to know it. Also makes it more accessible for people, you know? It's like, you gotta have a strong stomach already just thematically to watch this film. They were graphic, I, dude, I'd have bailed. But I appreciate that it shows that this world of chasing child traffickers, these agents have seen the worst of the worst. I would say it's not a job for everybody. I would argue it's not a job for anybody. They do it because if they don't, who will? There's an emotional toll that it takes and that is why Jim Caviezel is perfect in this film. He's perfect because I've always seen him as a person. The first time I really saw Jim Caviezel was Frequency. I was, I, he just has a kind face. Yes, I know he has played villains before, but to me, I don't know, maybe I still see him as Jesus, but he has a kind face. However, he has really pained eyes. His eyes just have this look about him, like he's dealing with a lot of pain, but trying to hide it. Perfect for the character. He always looks like he is one sentence away from just breaking down and crying, but he still has that switch flipped. And really, that's largely all of us in the audience. We're like that, so it's kind of, you know, it was relatable to see Jim Caviezel be like the rest of us. Us be like Jim Caviezel. If you don't cry in the movie, you did actively try to hold it back. No one's judging anyone here. I'm just saying that's the logistical fact. Also, they use the budget really well in here. The movie costs about $14.5 million, thus saith the Googles. Incredible use of budget. If I found out this movie cost twice as much as that, like $30 million, I'd be like, yeah, that tracks. Also, they made the most of their budget. That's actually really impressive. It costs less than half of that at $14.5 million. I have seen movies with $60 million budgets look far cheaper than this movie ever did. If you dare to look into the facts of the true story of this, you do see where they trimmed the budget. I guess the main operation, oper Operation Triple, I want to call it Triple Tap. I don't think that's it. Triple Take, right. So Operation Triple Take was much larger. They actually saved a lot more people, but for the sake of the film, they were like, let's, concentrate on the children that they saved. Those kind of corners cut, you see where they were like, if we had a larger budget, maybe we could show the whole thing, but we can't show how large scale that operation was. You don't know that. You don't know until you start the Googling afterwards, but the fact that this movie makes you look into it more, makes you start Googling, that's a good thing. I also like, I feel like this is gonna be a concern for some people, so I guess, the studio, don't know much about it, but I heard it's a faith-based studio. Also, it's called The Sound of Freedom. Point is, in this politically charged world, I'm sure some people look at this and be like, right wing, whatever, no thanks. But I felt it did a really good job at keeping that out of it. It's not about that. It's not about the right versus the left. It's about saving children. Like there are lines in the movie where Jim Caviezel says, God's children are not for sale. First of all, pretty badass phrase, but it's in context. It's, it's the character, it's what he would say. It's what the guy would say. So it makes sense in the context of the film and the character at hand. But this is based off of a true story. So yeah, there was a clear moment where I was like, I do not think it happened this way. Gonna look into it. Exactly. It's like the movie wraps up and it felt a little quick on the wrap up, but I was like, all right, you know, it's fine. Didn't have a big budget after all. And then it was like, you know what? 
What if this dude just does a solid snake sneaking operation into the jungle for one last? I was like, th it feels weirdly out of place to the point where I feel like they had their movie and it was all wrapped up and the sting goes down and someone was like, no, big Metal Gear Solid fan. I don't think that movie's ever happening so this is the closest we will get. Let's do it. For the sake of the fundamental wrap up of <laughs> fulfillment, I will say it's a two hour, 15 minute film. It did not feel like it was over two hours. That's really impressive. <laughs> These days, I really feel the runtime. I'm getting old and grumpy when it comes to run times, no doubt. I'm completely aware of it, just so you know. So it's actually more impressive I didn't notice it here. I would be remiss if I went without talking about the musical score. I thought the musical score was exceptional. It was heartfelt, beautiful, emotional, all one called for. On the other hand, broody, dark, intense atmospheric, somber, downright creepy in other scenes. But in the end, in a weekend of packed movies, I wasn't planning on doing this one, but glad I did. It's an informative film that's a solid thriller in its own right. That's all I ask. If a film exists to be informative, I only ask that it also be entertaining in the genre that it is in. I felt this film did that. Again, heavy subject matter, so if this is a one-time viewing, totally get it, but I do believe it is worth that one viewing. It emotionally sticks with you, and I'm glad I watched it. No alcohol required. All right, so Sound of Freedom. Have you seen it? What did you think about it? Whatever you thought, comment below, let me know, and as always, if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, click right here to see more.